Have you noticed changes in your aging pet's zest for life? Canine cognitive dysfunction syndrome causes disorientation, confusion, memory loss, and personality changes that are very similar to Alzheimer's disease in humans. Well, Dr. Jeff Nickel is an Albuquerque veterinarian and resident in veterinary behavior medicine. Good morning, Dr. Nickel. Thanks Good for morning. being here. Thank you for having us. But you're not alone. You've brought a special friend well, with you. Well, no. I have Quinn here who actually has cognitive dysfunction. And Quinn is 15? He's 15. Wow. He's he's functional. He's actually starting to feel better because we're giving him medication for his painful joints. So he's getting around better than he had been. Fantastic. But he's still having some trouble with relating to his family. Mm. He's gotten a little bit clingier. Mm -hmm. He's uh, had some house soiling problems. These are things that are commonly seen in yeah, older dogs. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. In fact, let's first remind viewers that you're actually trained in veterinary behavior medicine. So explain that first to us, what that well, means. Uh, it's postgraduate training in neurophysiology, okay. neurochemistry, mm -hmm. but also dermatology and internal medicine play a big part oh. in many of the behavior problems we see because so often physical disorders mm -hmm. affect behavior. Absolutely. While learning theory, it's, you know, it's a real honest to goodness recognized residency training. Well, are there any special brain disorders of pets that we should actually be aware of? Well, this is a very important one. Dogs. Mm -hmm get cognitive dysfunction. Okay. Dogs his age, 68% of them have it. Wow. And it's so similar to Alzheimer's of humans that dogs have become a research model for people. And that's one of the most important things I want to talk about. Sure. Is my research project yes. into early diagnosis mm -hmm. of cognitive dysfunction in dogs. Yes. Which also carries over to Alzheimer's in humans. It's basically a research on aging brain disease of dogs, correct? Well, that's exactly right. Okay. Well, the, the project has to do with high resolution MRI scans mm -hmm. on dogs brains after they've died. Yeah. And we compare the number of these protein plaques that are counted okay. with the severity of their symptoms. And so people who want their dog to participate, uh -huh. sadly, at some point they have to be put down. Gosh, yeah. And if people would allow us to borrow them mm -hmm. to do these high resolution MRI scans, yeah. we could learn a lot more and possibly diagnose this problem before it gets so advanced that they don't respond. We have some great treatments for these dogs. Okay, that's so Some important. of them work well. See, that's good to know. That at least that's there's right. some way to regulate this and, and help them maintain a, at oh, least a somewhat normal life. Many of them get significantly better. The real trick we're looking for is how do we diagnose it early and do a lot more good sooner? Okay, okay. Well, let me ask you this. I know that we have a picture of, a, of one of the pets that you've worked with. Is that correct? That's right. And that's, is his name is Joey? Joey. So let's take a look of Joey because this is Joey in Better Days. Oh, my gosh. He's the one on the right. Just could yeah. melt my heart. I know. I'm take cute as that Oh, my be. gosh. Look at Joey. And who's Vinny? I guess it's Vinny's Vinny birthday. Was the, Vinny was the guy in the middle. <laughs> this is a few years ago. Vinny has passed on. Aww. And Joey, now that. That's Joey. And, and this is Joey now? Yeah, and if you see your dog, you notice how confused he looks. Oh, yeah. The guy just can't decide what he wants to do. Normal dogs should be exploring, sniffing around, reading the bulletin boards, posting a few messages of sure. their own. And the poor guy's befuddled. Yeah. And many people look at that in their own dog and say, well, that's normal aging. Mm -hmm. That's not normal aging. It breaks your heart. And in fact, this poor guy here doesn't have normal aging either, wow. but at least He's still functional. So how could you recognize this? I mean, I know a lot of our viewers are probably thinking, maybe I have a dog who has CDS. That's how right. can they how can they get their pets involved in the treatment and know that their their pet actually needs this treatment? Well, they, they should talk to their veterinarian. If the okay. dog is relating less with the family, uh -huh. walks into a room and starts barking at nothing, yeah. gets lost in corners, starts going to the hinge side of the door when they've always known how to go through, mm. house soiling, those kinds of things. Often, dogs like Quinn, he's awake at night, pacing often, wow. and there are medications that make a difference for a lot of these. So wow. I would encourage anybody who suspects their dog may have this to wow. either call their regular veterinarian, okay. or if they don't have a regular veterinarian, they're welcome to contact my office. Absolutely. And Let's we can help them out with these yeah. treatments, and I can also ask them if maybe they would volunteer their dog after it's passed on Aww. to help us with the research, with research. because this can save lives for other generations and possibly for humans as well. And, the, and these pets are members of our families and it's just we should take care of them just the way we would take care of any uh, other member of our family. I know and family. don't assume that just because they're running into these problems mm -hmm. that that's expected. 
Right, right. It's not acceptable to get completely confused mm -hmm. and lose track of who your family is. Well, and I think what's so comforting, and I think people will take comfort in knowing that there is a way to at least make it a little bit better. Obviously, the yeah. aging process is going to happen. It's inevitable. But to know that there's a possibility right. of making it better for them, I think that's really wonderful. And you mentioned that people contacting you would help not only to participate in research, but also to have their, their pet examined by right. you. How can they do that? Well, again, most people have a regular veterinarian. Okay. And all veterinarians are equipped to handle this stuff. Okay. I'm, I've got research going on right now, and I've just published a scientific paper on this. Right. So I'm, I'm up on the, the latest. Okay. And most of my colleagues are very happy to contact me anytime so I can share additional information with them. That's wonderful. So if a person's veterinarian needs a little bit of extra information, they're That's welcome right. to call in. Everybody and knows how to get a hold of me. Absolutely. There's the phone number, and of course, you can also go to the website for more information. And while we have you here, could you tell us about some of the other behavioral services that you provide? Well, the truth is I provide behavior services of all kinds to dogs and cats. Nice. What I don't do is I don't do training. Okay. But people whose dogs are destructive, mm -hmm. mutilate their own bodies. Oh. These are serious. If they were humans, they'd be considered, frankly, mentally ill. Sure, sure. Aggression is a very big part of what I treat mm -hmm. for a whole lot of different reasons. The most common being fear. Ah. And that's the, one of the most common reasons people relinquish pets to animal shelters. And so often, those pets lot. can be helped. House soiling, especially in cats, mm -hmm. on almost every case. We can help them. So I think and manage I think, those problems. Well, I think the message really is then: don't give up on your pets. No, that's right. Don't give exactly. up on them. Don't believe you've tried everything mm -hmm. until you've consulted with somebody who's actually, frankly, highly trained. Well, and I must say, Quinn is rather well behaved, and well, we appreciate a, he's a we good little guy. Isn't he? Being here today, I know. Very special. He's and, a very sweet little and boy. And Dr. Nichols, such important information that I think so many people were unaware about until today. So I appreciate you being here and sharing that with all of us. Well, you're welcome. Thanks really for wonderful. Inviting us on. Thank you, and thank you, Quinn, for being such a doll. We appreciate it. He's a sweetheart. Wish him lots of continued health, and we hope that he he's actually gotten better. That's a good thing. That's right. See? Some, so there is hope. There is That's definitely right. hope. Thank you, can, you so much. And we'll be right back. Don't go away. <laughs>